It was so different from Rosh Hashanah, you guys. <laughs> Shana Secular Tova. Happy Secular New Year in a couple of days. I'm sure that the majority of us are looking forward to saying goodbye to 2023. Are you kind of glad to see it go? And hoping that 2024 will prove to be a better year. Now you may have your New Year's practices. When our kids were growing up, and we, we did not ever make it even when we were living in New York to Times Square. It never happened for us. But um, we couldn't go out and celebrate. We had to stay home. And uh, what we did instead was we'd invite some people over and we'd play a game in which we would put the year on trial. We'd divide up into teams and one group was assigned to prosecute the year that was. And the other group had the august task of trying to defend it. Now, I'm sure if we were to do so this year, the defenders, with all that's painful in the world, would have a hard time making their case. But maybe we should look at this last year through the perspective of Parsha Vayechi that we're reading this Shabbat. And be inspired both by Joseph and Jacob, who, who die at the end of the Parsha, but ask the people around them, the next generation, to think about their future in a positive way. Joseph saw the possibility for Tikkun repairing the world, even when he was in the pit, even in the midst of great crisis in Egypt. He saw possibility. This quintessential dream interpreter stood up as a proud Jewish man in his diaspora of Egypt and despite his lowly position, helped the power, the Pharaoh, to understand how he could still seek ways to solve that country's deepest problems. Yes, there is an upcoming famine, Joseph states. Your dream has made that clear. But maybe God's telling us that so we can save food and share it with others, and save Egypt and others as well. And this Pharaoh, the one who did know Joseph, unlike in next week's Parsha, had him lead the way. It may seem naive to look this year at our reality and all of Joseph keep working at the task of thinking we can make life better. But I wonder, should we not yet dream that we might achieve true peace in the Middle East? Even though the prophetic vision of transforming our arms into plowshares with none making us afraid seems so far from fulfillment? Is it too idealistic of us to continue praying for the return of the hostages, for the end of the extremism of Hamas, for the building the foundations of a new possibility in that land? Is it unrealistic to similarly pray for an end of the invasion of Ukraine, for the safety and security of all peoples living in Nigeria and Sudan, other parts of the world that have conflict? Is it too simplistic to keep hoping for true progress against global warming and climate change? A challenge that, if unaddressed, will make the famine in Egypt of Joseph's time seem like a trivial thing. Did you see the waves this weekend? You, know, you get a little worried, right? Yes, I know that if you were prosecuting this year, you would have an easy time asserting that those hopes are indeed naive. And yet Joseph, in this Torah cycle, didn't give up his efforts despite being in an Egypt that was in such trouble. And his father, Jacob, who faced a life of challenges, who wrestled with everything in his life, he takes stock here at the end of his life in this portion and asks his children, who've been forced into diaspora as refugees of hunger, to yet see the hope in front of them and to see how they might bring blessing forward into their lives and be inspired even after he's gone to face the challenges 
that life brings you. So maybe we need to follow Jacob and Joseph's example this Shabbat. And think about what have actually been the blessings of your life this past year? And what hope does the good of this last year, despite the challenges, inspire you to face your future with renewed determination to make not just your life, but the lives of others better? So take a moment and think about the personal blessings that, despite the yuck out there, happened to you. Did you fall in love this year? Did you have a child or grandchild? Or some other wonderful life cycle experience? Did you recover from an illness? Find a new job? Embrace the renewed freedom of travel? Or gain a new skill or hobby? Or get joyful clarity about your life's direction? Some good things happened to you this last year. And you can acknowledge it. And there are even good things that happened out in the world. First of all, how many of you are wearing masks right now? Not, just one person, I think, right? The vaccines are working. Our lives are so different from what they were a year ago. We've returned to in-person gatherings, going to the theater and the symphony, to friends' homes. And being here in the synagogue with a true sense of minyan, while also making it possible for those who can't be here to come online. There have been other health advances as well. Vaccines that fight against malaria. Vaccines that will save millions and millions of lives. Secondly, it's hard to believe, but the effort against global warming is making some progress. Electric cars are no longer an anomaly. The third best-selling car in the world was what? A Tesla. It's amazing. There's progress on carbon capture, and China and Europe and the U.S. have, by leaps and bounds, expanded the usage of solar and wind energy. Locally, scientists are making progress on fusion energy that might give us abundant electrical power to power the future. There was an international agreement on oceans and species recovery. And I even read in the Washington Post that the ozone layer, what's happening to it? The hole in it is shrinking. I missed that in the news. Third, our community, this Emmanuel, but the Jewish community in general, is growing. We're engaging and learning and volunteering here in this synagogue in ways that are so inspiring. Our youth programs from Tat Shabbat to the religious school is teeming with participation and energy. Jews and those who love them really want to connect right now. They've made their synagogues extensions of their homes. And though it may not seem like it, That hole out there for our new building is really making progress. I think we've hit bottom, Joel. Is that right? And he's just started to lay the foundations, Alan, for what will be. Emmanuel Next is such a a vote for the future. And we should all be inspired and hopeful because of it. And I would add that even in the conflict in Israel that's taking place, you don't always read about it. But think about it. There are Arab countries trying to help bring an end to the conflict. That Egypt and Jordan are trying to talk with Israel and the Palestinians about making peace. That's something that never happened before. That Arab and uh, uh, Jewish communities and mixed communities in Haifa and in Jaffa are talking to each other about how to avoid being in conflict. Those are rays of hope Seeds of peace that are being planted despite the pain and suffering that's out there. So I do want us to welcome in as Jews 2024 and realize, yes, that we have work to do, but see the possibility of blessing that is still much a part of our lives. And as you think about your blessing, how to carry it forward and be a blessing to others. On his deathbed, Jacob says to every one of his children at the end of the book of Genesis, Tehei bracha, 
as God told Abraham, find how you can be a blessing and never lose hope as we stand up for a positive Jewish life and as we stand up for a better life for all of us in the world. Strive not to just enjoy the blessing next year, but to hey bracha, wishing you all health and joy and a better 2024. Shabbat Shalom.